Aggies cause I'm off to the hole in the road I'm walking off school and I'm off to the city Watching telly all night and I'm not looking pretty See I got this job downtown Selling knocked off ladies watches for a pound For a really dodgy man that I met in a dodgy cafe You know he said to me The girl who sold these yesterday Wasn't selling very carefully Police came along and took her and all my watches away So if you see some coppers you grab my stuff and leg it boy Right away I'll be in the cafe Mr. Boy from Sheffield Making his way Through life I'm just a boy from Sheffield Making his way I'm just a boy from Sheffield Making his way Through life I'm just a boy from Sheffield So we spent a few hours and I haven't sold enough For my bus fare home street sell is pretty close So I turn on the charm for the lunchtime rush With a smile and a wiggle on my schoolboy touch Well the charm is working in the underground There's a crowd of men and women gather round And the watches they are going The money is a flow. Think I'll touch a little extra Stick it in my pocket Spend you later I'm just a boy from Sheffield Making his way Through life I'm just a boy For an hour and I'm dying for a slash I've had enough of this so I'm off for a piss Then a quick walk back round to the cafe Sitting at his table drinking tea Looks at me suspiciously Then with a glance at the watch he says How did you do? He paid me a couple of quid Then he said Would you like to come and work another day? I said I'd come back down on Friday And to that he said okay So with two pounds in my pocket And another five in my shoe I nip down to Castle Market where A man who looks like Leo Sayre Is selling pots with cockles and prawns You make me feel you like dancing. dancing Then off back to dinner on the wiggers and then home I'm just a boy from Sheffield Making his way I'm just a boy from Sheffield Making his way I'm just a boy from Sheffield Making his way I'm just a boy from Sheffield Let's <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to Raconteurs News on this Tuesday. It's an auspicious day. It's the 7th of February 2023 and it's been about a week and so since you've seen me. So hello, I'm back again. Uh, thank you very much to uh, Jimmy and uh, to Dr. Robert uh, for holding the fort while I was away. Um, and uh, I, I had a great time. I had a great time. Uh, more of that on Friday though when we're just uh, it's just me and Jimmy Chan because tonight we've got a, a great guest on, so uh, we don't want to be doing too much of that talking. We don't want to be talking. Of all, although my arm hurts, and I've, I, I caught some, yeah, like some chronic the other day, and I sunbed in it. But and I shouldn't play water water polo either. Evening, Jimmy. How are you doing, mate? Oh, it's great. Good to have you back, bro. And uh, I'm sure everybody's happy too, because like I think they've all been a bit doomed out in your absence, you know. So, look at my apologies for any harm or injury caused by excessive use of doom while you were away. <laughs> oh well. Uh, anyway, well, it's uh, uh, listen. You, you did stuff, and people watched and listened, and and that's all we can ask for, because that's all the only service we really provide. 
We've got a great guest tonight. If you've not seen any of the shows that we've done with him before, we've done many, many ones. And I suggest you go back and look at them all. He's a, a little bit of a master on all sorts of different subjects. Uh, principally, he's a, a bit of a UFO um, enthusiast, shall we say. Uh, as you can see, he's got his friend stood behind. I hope that's your friend stood behind you, not somebody waiting to uh, <laughs> next screen, because that, 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 I think that we might get some good figures for that one. Even more uh, scary. Could be his controller. Uh, <laughs> that would be an exclusive, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I, Jason's going to be back. Well, good evening. Uh, Jason, it's uh, yeah, it's it's great to be back, uh, Jimmy. It's great. I, I'm Ben Emlyn Jones. I'm uh, I've been on here a few times now, and it's great to be back on the show again. Um, it's, I think I was one of your first guests, uh, Jason, um, in the old days. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I really enjoy what you're doing. And um, it's, I've been, already been talking to people in the chat, in the live chat. So welcome everyone who's there. So, thanks for coming along. Yes, we've got, uh, hopefully we'll have a few um, people that uh, come to follow you as well. Uh, King Els, a few names that I, that I don't recognise. Uh, Bloggerty Schmoo, good mm. evening to you, Bloggerty Schmoo, Bandit, Bandit Buster, Mascara Snake, JJ, King L. Uh, yes, we'll get that one, but don't worry, the questions are coming in already. Um, do you know what, though? Uh, let me just say hello to people because I'm just getting so in far in front of myself. Uh, Tony's in as well. Uh, he's the uh, Sean Hamer, Mascara Snake, everybody, JJ as well, and all the people that are not in the chat room that are just having a, a listen along on this fabulous Tuesday evening. And of course, Jimmy O as well, he's there. Uh, good evening, Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. Um, Hi, Jimmy. Yes, so uh, the, we've had that. For, we, had, we had one question in, so let's, let's just go with that because I've not seen much of this. I've not, with me being away, I've, I've sort of like turned everything off. And um, the uh, I, I took me, I took uh, me, um, oh, what is it? The uh, me, me fire stick so that I could watch football, but apart from that, I didn't watch any TV, and all the TV that I did watch were uh, making no sense at all because I don't speak very fluent Spanish. But um, I have noticed that there's this weather balloon that's, uh, uh, the, sorry, not weather balloon, just the balloon, a spy balloon from China, a, a bit sophisticated. And, it, uh, it, of course, it's got uh, it's got echoes of Roswell in there as well. I think that was the first thing that, um, that, that crossed my mind. Uh, what you made of it, Ben? Well, when I first heard about it, I did think, my first thought when I heard about it, oh, my God, they've got, they've got aliens in, uh, again. And they're trying to cover it up. And loads of people have seen it and they're trying to cover it up. But then I looked at some of the details and I realized, no, no, it actually was a balloon. Um, it actually came from, it did come from China. The Chinese at least claimed it. They've said it's theirs. Um, now, the problem is that they say, it's, they apologize. They said it's, it's regretful. It's just a meteorological balloon. It went off course. It blew, uh, blew where it wasn't supposed to go. And it went over the United States. Now, they, they actually said it was an airship. They used the word airship. Which could be a mistranslation, but the, but apparently it does actually have its own internal propulsion, um, which means technically it is an airship, not a balloon. But um, it did go blow off course, and it went over the United States. Now the the U.S. administration said no, it's not a weather balloon. <clears throat> it's it's actually for its military reconnaissance, and it's spying on our nuclear bases. That's what they claimed. Now, uh, there was a lot of fuss because a lot of people said, well, maybe they should shoot it down. And they said, we're not going to shoot it down yet because it might land on someone's head. It might hurt somebody. But uh, what they did was it, it eventually blew over the entire continent of the United States. So any intelligence it, it gathered, it would have... Um... <laughs> Very good, Jake. <laughs> we could joke. <laughs> it's, uh, and it's... Um... It's, it actually eventually reached the coast of South Carolina, Myrtle Beach. And as soon as it was over the sea, <coughs> well, they uh, they immediately called, uh, they always closed the airspace and they kept ships away. I think they did that. It seemed like they wanted plenty of TV cameras to see it. So, of course, every TV camera in the country went to Myrtle Beach and were filming this balloon. And they, they basically popped it. They popped it with a with a missile fired from a, a plane, um, an F-22 Raptor fighter. And um, it had a fragmentation warhead that blew the envelope to pieces. So it immediately dropped straight down, which is what they wanted. I mean, it's pretty obvious they didn't want to just put a little hole in it and let, let it deflate slowly. They wanted to pop the thing completely so yeah. it fell straight down because they wanted to re retrieve it. They didn't want... They didn't want it flying out to sea over deep water. They wanted it in shallow because they knew it would sink when it hit the water. 
They wanted it. They wanted to have it in shallow water so they could send divers down to pick it up, which is what they've been doing. There were a couple of ships in the area, just and it's obvious they've got divers and they're going down to pick up the pieces. And when they do, they're going to take them to um, probably Wright Patterson Air Force Base, the Foreign Technical Data Section, which interesting is where they took the Roswell saucer in 1947. Still there at Wright Pat, and they're going to study it very very carefully and. Um, I, I've got a feeling that's going to be the end of the story now, at least until some spy leaks it. So, um, it's it. I don't know what, what what they may find out. It was just a weather balloon, or they may find out it's got some sophisticated cameras on it, something like that. I, I don't know. They won't tell us anyway. It, it just all seemed very strange to me. I mean, for something as primitive as a balloon, if it were for, for um, you know spying and recon reconnaissance and 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 that sort of thing. Uh, I, I just don't know that. It seemed to be a bit of a, a bit of a distraction. Very. I mean, China has some very sophisticated reconnaissance satellites. Uh, then the act, the true capabilities of these satellites are not known, but it's generally it's generally believed from various people involved that they can they can read a newspaper headline from from low Earth orbit. That's how good mm -hmm. their cameras are. Now, you you balloons. What what a satellite could do from low Earth orbit, which is perfectly legal. You can fly you can fly anything you want in space over the United States. They don't own the they own the airspace, but not the space space above it. Um, it it's perfectly legal. It, I mean, sending a balloon over seems a bit superfluous, really. And of course, it's going to be detected by NORAD, and it's, they knew inevitably if they did it deliberately, they knew it would be detected. They're probably surprised it wasn't shot down immediately because um, there'd be a case for shooting it down as soon as it was discovered. It was essentially invading their airspace. So, um, mm -hmm. so I mean, it's, it seems odd that they would. It seems an odd thing that they would send a spice balloon over. I mean, um, it's a bit sort of like old-fashioned, isn't it? Yeah. What if it? What if it wasn't Chinese balloon at all? Because uh, back in 2019, the Guardian released a very, very interesting story about this new balloon technology that the Americans were innovating and which. De Incidentally, sound very, very like the type of balloon that was floating above above Montana, like with the array, the solar array, and the and the interesting little device in the middle of that antenna array of solar panels, which was alleged to have been like the, the way the technology was working with the American balloons was that there was a three hundred and sixty degree. Um, panoramic camera uh, installed on them like and what they could do was that they could follow cars people everything and the the advantage of balloons apparently is the fact that they can stay up there for up to a month or maybe two months uh, and and just float around and just stay focused on a particular area because they have some way of sort of like using gear currents to, to rise and lower themselves and, and to be able to maintain a course in a particular area. And like the, at that height too, you've got a, a long range, like especially with some of the new camera technology that you, you, you can actually, like if you were talking about the, the, the cameras from space there and how, how they can tell what type of fungus you have on your knob and stuff like that quite <laughs> easily. Like, so if there were American balloons, and this is what I think they were, I think it was an American balloon, that's why they didn't shoot the fucker down, because, you know, if they were worried about it, they probably would have shot it down, but they didn't seem to be concerned about it. <laughs> and, and that, like, it just seems very, very convenient uh, right at this particular moment in time, now that they're pushing for a little bit of trouble with China, like, oh, look at, look at, we know it's ours, like, but we don't want to tell the people just yet that this is what we're doing, we're spying on them in this fashion, and let's pretend it's China. Chinese, and we'll bring it down out at sea and make it look like it's all a hunky dory now. And and they have their fear, sort of excuse to uh, to to get the people worried about China. I don't know, man. I could be mad, like you know, I could be just well, a conspiracy theorist. Well, these balloons, these balloons are used. I mean, balloons, high altitude balloons, are quite in common use among most nations. And they look exactly the. They have solar panels on them to power the whatever machinery is in the payload. Very often, this is simply meteorological. <clears throat> A device to measure temperature, air pressure, <coughs> um, humidity, things like that, to take pictures of clouds and things like that. Um, you see, the Americans have them too, yeah. I mean, the, the, the thing is that uh, Mao Ning, that's the Chinese, uh, I forgot the ti her title, but she's a Chinese official, she said immediately that it was a Chinese balloon. Now, the Chinese are not denying it. Now, if it had been, for example, um, there was a similar, there was an instance, the, the instance like this has happened before. So, for example, um, there was uh, the in 1960, I believe it was, a, a, 
a, a spy plane was shot down, the U-2 spy plane. Ga uh, yeah, what's his name? Gary? Gary? Gary Powers was the pilot, yeah. Okay, this was yeah. a lot more serious because they couldn't really deny it because, you see, this was uh, the, this this plane had a pilot. This was this was in the age before drones, so this plane had to have a pilot. And he luckily he did survive. He was even eventually let free. They exchanged him for they exchanged him exchanged him for a Russian spy eventually. But um, this was an unmanned balloon, uh, no crew. Um, so there's these things can operate autonomously now. But there was another – so so the Americans, unfortunately, had to admit straight away, yes, they were flying this plane over their airspace. Now, this um, this balloon is it's very high up, 60,000 feet. <coughs> um, but uh, it can still be – it can still be – in the, see, the Russians did shoot down that plane. So the Americans essentially were, were corner. They were like – basically, they had no choice but to confess. China didn't necessarily have to confess to this. If you look, for example, at another instance – Oh, no, I'm, I'm going. I'm going in a circle here, but um, it was just more recent, a few couple of months ago. A missile landed on Poland. Now, this was actually um, mm -hmm. the uh, Vladimir Zelensky, the, the Ukrainian president, said this is a Russian strike missile. This is literally an attack on Poland by Russia, <laughs> um, and basically started calling for all-out all war, which would have been an absolute disaster. But um, he started calling for, and um, the thing is, then it was revealed that it was. Um, this was actually a Ukrainian anti-aircraft missile that had gone astray. Mm. But again, he, one, when these things happen, there's always there's always denial. It's not one of ours. It's not one of ours. It is. I'm trying to think of another example right now. But there's many times when something like this happens. There was a Russian submarine once that ran aground off the coast of Sweden. And I remember that was all loads of fuss about that. But there's been instances, for example, when um, another this uh, submarine was caught in the Irish Sea. I think it, it was. It, sailed into a fishing net or something and got trapped and the fishing boat was damaged and the Russians said it's not one of ours it's not one of our subs and and the British were saying yes it is it's one of yours and there was all this fuss I mean China could have denied that that was their balloon and they didn't so uh, my guess is for that reason it probably is Chinese what they did say was it's all perfectly innocent it's just a weather balloon we've, <laughs> <laughs> we've heard that before haven't we it's just a weather balloon swamp gas <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, if they've shot it down and recovered it, then I'm sure they'll be able to find out what what, what it's really for, what what the uh, the reasons are. That doesn't mean to say that they're going to tell us the truth about what the reasons were, but you know, at least that they will be able to find that out. But it's not. Yeah, I mean, they won't say anything. I mean, funny enough, there was this article in this thing called the Republic Brief, which says here. Um, US, U.S. commander reveals chilling update. Chinese spy balloon carried explosives. And apparently the, it says it basically that when it was shot down, it actually had what you might call a scuttling charge on board. To just, that just to blow, blow to pieces anything in the payload so that it wouldn't be of any use to anyone salvaging it. Um, I don't know how true that is. This is not official. This is... Um, by a journalist called Martin Walsh. Walsh, he doesn't know, he just says a top U.S. Army general told him this. They always um, do that. They, they always do that, don't they, though? It's official yeah. say, experts say, you know, it, ne it never narrows it down to one single person say, right, this bloke is putting his reputation on the line to to, to say this. Yeah. No, if it was a reconnaissance balloon, if it was a military reconnaissance balloon, it probably would have some kind of explosive device on board, like I say, a scuttling charge, which means that if it was ever in a situation where it was about to be captured by the enemy, they could blow it up just so that they wouldn't get anything useful out of the wreckage. Yeah. That makes, like sense. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. But whether that's true, I mean, I, all I saw was uh, it was, it was filmed on live TV. It was just, I think the plane flew past it and then, and then it went pop and it went very clearly. It just went pop and fell straight down. <clears throat> and you could see it very clearly. I didn't see any like secondary explosion or anything like that. <coughs> hmm. Are you okay, Ben? Do you need to get a drink oh, of water? Ben's got the that? poof, has he? Got it, the poof. Uh, believe it or not, it's a good old-fashioned cold. Well, it's, it's wearing off now, but who remembers cold? It's almost nostalgic to get a cold, isn't it? Who remembers cold, guys? Oh, yeah, the welcome cold. Come here, uh, uh, did, did, did you actually see the, uh, the, the video floating around about the explosions in the sky space above Montana? And uh, I seen some curious video about uh, it looked like what looked like one or two explosions in the sky and and a smoke trail that was coming down. Um, did you see that video? No. Does that mean there was another balloon and they shot it down over Montana? I mean, I know I there was know. a second balloon reported over South America, which just seems a strange coincidence. Yeah, but 
this was in the time when the when the bloom has been reported over Montana. Like so, I don't know what was going on there either. But the, I did get a secondary report a little bit later on, uh, about a day later, that it was being confirmed by Montana police in this particular town where the explosion happened. That it was being sort of like confirmed as real. And uh, the, the video footage is quite interesting. Like maybe you might want to check it out. Like, but that's quite compelling. But oh, I wonder what I mean. Obviously, the the balloon that we're talking about survived that attack, whatever it was, and went on to fly across the entire country. Uh, people were filming it from their back garden. You know, there's like people's telephoto lenses. It was it's it was very high up, sixty thousand feet. But it was very really big. It was like about a hundred, the envelope was like one hundred and fifty feet across. And the payload. Three, bus size, three yeah, buses three, in size, yeah. Very big, big balloon. Um, mm. So uh, the people were filming it and they were thinking it was like. Um, so that obviously then, that then of course, that one was terminated over the sea. So everyone saw that. I mean, now whether there'll be any more, we'll have to wait and see. Then, so perhaps, uh, perhaps China will try it again, send them another. <laughs> Very interesting, very interesting stuff. But I, I, you see, that that's the one I saw. Um, I had a brief, I had a look at Twitter, um, and I had a look at Twitter, and that, that I think was it looked like it was in Montana. She said, she said, this is this is Montana. What is going on? And it looked like the balloon itself had disintegrated, and and, and something was falling out of the sky, and I, I just couldn't work it out. But like I say, I, I'd got more. Um, pressing issues to than, than to look into what, what, what's going on. <laughs> yeah, Spanish chicks. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it, it could be like there was um, some fake. It could be someone faked it. I mean, there was a lot of fuss over it. I mean, obviously the U.S. government has a very low opinion of its um, population because they're putting out. They would. They put out a message to people in Montana: please do not try to, please do not try to shoot at this balloon with your, like, your rifles and things. Because it won't. You can't shoot. It's too high up. Like they really think they're that stupid, or maybe they just think stupid hillbillies. They're going to just get their guns out. God no, damn it! No. There's a balloon up there. <laughs> Something like you know, that. Though, yeah. it, 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 from the way that Americans are portrayed in the media, you know, it, it's it's no wonder that they had to do that because you know, that that is the <laughs> the, um, the, the the stereotypical thing that you would think an American would do. Where you go, oh look up there. Have you seen the meme of a? There's the meme of those hillbillies and they're like throwing beer bottles up into the sky. <laughs> well, you have um, to think about it. When you think about a lot of these American preppers, for example, I wouldn't rule it out that some of those fuckers have stingers in their bunkers. <laughs> I wish Bill Hicks was still alive. He just I think of the jokes he'd make of this. <laughs> It is. It's crazy. It is crazy. It's um, it, it's it's all. I, I I just it's beyond. I've been saying this ever since we started this show in 2016. The you know it, the more and more the, the the further we go on in time, the more insane the world is. And uh, yeah. like, like you said, they, they, there's so much um, coverage of this balloon and other balloons and other things and the Chinese aren't denying it's theirs, you know, the Ch Chinese probably just sent it over and store. let's just put them in a panic, let's just like, if we send a couple of these balloons over, let's just laugh at them what they're doing, you know, and there's maybe, maybe the whole thing was just a test to see exactly how the US administration would react to something like that, maybe this was a big social experiment by China, maybe maybe America played into their hands and just uh, by <coughs> basically the Chinese wanted to see how exactly the Americans would respond because I think China has quite a low opinion of the Americans as most countries do with Biden in charge you know um, he's not exactly an impressive international statesman um, so maybe they just thought we'll take even take the mickey out of him hi Maureen how you doing um, uh, Maureen's there um, maybe just thought we'll take the mickey out of them just get of course the, the, they get their own political scientists and military strategists will will gain an awful lot of inf information and intelligence on how the Americans react to this. So um, maybe that's the whole reason they did it. I mean, who knows? It's, it's, people, people do this sort of thing in, 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 in geopolitics, in diplomacy and things like that. But um, it, was, it was a, I suppose it was a bit of a laugh, really. I think it was quite funny. I mean, all the world's a stage. All the world's a yeah. stage. We're all looking up at the sky. Uh, at balloons. Um, but so where should we have been looking? Yeah, but you're right. Well, this is an important point, right? And you're, you're first. Of all, yeah. I want to reply to the point you made before, Jason. Back in like because I I've been doing this for so long and I've been writing and producing material for so long on social media. 
Um, you could look through the things I said in 2014, 2015. There's no way I could have predicted what happened in the in the last few years. I was completely wrong with everything I predicted, and this this the whole world has turned out to be so different to how I thought it would be. Um, definitely. Now, as for um, as for the uh, you know burying bad news kinds of things. Um, this does happen. We all remember when Donald Rumsfeld on he, he made that announcement on the 10th of December 2001. Well, the Department of Defense can't account for what was it 2.7 trillion dollars? Sorry, yeah. I left my I left my wallet on the bus. Oh, that, the day before 9/11. Yeah. Are you course, sure that day, Are you sure that back. wasn't 21 trillion? I I thought it was 20. No, it was three trillion. trillion. It was almost three trillion. It was sort of like 2. Oh, okay. So we're, we're going back to a time. Money. We're going back to a time where a trillion dollars, I mean, it sounds like, you know, monopoly, nothing these days. Small change There's now. corporations that are worth a trillion dollars, but there's countries that, 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 there's corporations that have got more money than, than actual countries, but a trillion dollars mm. then did sound like a lot, and three trillion went missing. He, he, did, he did a press conference at the Pentagon, if you remember. I mm. think he did the press conference in the bit where the the plane went, or but anyway, that's, that's interesting coincidence, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it's... That, I mean that, that might just be a false memory that I've got. I remember <laughs> twenty three years yeah. ago, uh, twenty two <laughs> years ago. But, uh, but you know, I, I we did cover a lot of this stuff, and you know, so Mandela, three trillion dollars goes, and everyone then goes, three trillion dollars, three trillion dollars. You know, and 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 then next day, boom, everyone looks up. Everyone forgets and about it. And of course, it, yeah. when everybody's looking up. What's happening? Yeah. Come down below. All the gold's being taken out. Yeah. Uh, interesting how uh, interesting how uh, he did the press conference in the part of the Pentagon that was hit, but then conveniently he was on the other side of the building when the planes hit. And because it's such a big building, you know, they, the planes actually didn't actually do any damage to the other half of the building because it's so big. Um, now, in this situation, the FBI, yes, <laughs> the FBI, Mulder and Scully, no, not them, the more normal FBI, they said, um, they said, oh, I, I, Maury wants me to bring something up. Oh, I'll, I'll remember that, yeah. Um, yes, well, I'll star that. Put, I'll pop a star in that and then it will, it'll, uh, cool. it'll but uh, the it. FBI actually, there was an announcement to, to the US Congress that the FBI wanted um, a grant. Oh, I think it was, I think it was like $8.7 billion to build a completely new second a second headquarters in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Now, you may think they've already got one, but they wanted another. They said, it's not enough. We need another because they're expanding their operation. For what? God knows what. I don't think it's, I don't think it's so Mulder and Scully can spot flying saucers. Um, now, this, of course, is extremely controversial that they, want, that they want that much money so soon after the election and when there's new Congress people and everything like that. So um, that was that would have probably been front page news, but it was, of course, knocked down to page three or four because of this balloon and everyone talking about this damn balloon. Yeah. yeah so that's exactly. interesting, isn't it? So it's very. I'm sure the FBI were praising the uh, Chinese and their balloon like nobody's business because it basically uh, kept kept their own uh, little scandal secret, or at least it distracted people away from the scandal. You don't need to keep things secret when you can control the narrative and, and, and focus people's attention somewhere else. Yeah, exactly, we, which um, it also, which I think is a, is a similar situation, is uh, Ukraine, this Ukraine situation. I think that is to divert everyone's gaze away from the Middle East, from... Uh, Israel and Palestine because things are uh, really heating up there again. Um, so uh, again, uh, there's a there's a professor called Jerry Croft. I think you have I've told you about him before. Remember he did some um, circles uh, crop circle videos, and I sent you the link to him. Jerry Croft, he's a um, a professor. We've talked oh, about him. Rings a bell, yeah, rings a bell. Yeah, well, he did. Uh, he's done a very interesting look at which was probably about uh, must be a year old now but he said a similar thing to that that this that ukraine and russia we the things were going to start you know hotting up in russia but the actual where we should be looking um is uh israel and palestine um, iran, so, speci yeah. i would imagine iran specifically because uh, that looks like where a lot of uh, there's been quite a number of attacks uh, in iran over the last week or so, like uh, quite a number of facilities were taken out there. There was a lot of rumors that one of the explosions that went off might have been nuclear, but I seen the explosion in question and it didn't look like a nuclear explosion. It looked like a, a normal like fuel, fuel air bo bomb 
type of uh, incineration. But yeah, maybe maybe you've seen that, uh, Ben. I haven't, but I know that um, I, haven't, I haven't actually seen this. But I know that Israel and Iran are, are like getting they are not on good terms, and it seems to be getting worse. And of course, both both nations do have nuclear weapons, and so. Um, that's a nasty situation, especially for people who live in those countries, the ordinary people in those countries. But um, I've, the idea that we can be distracted away from something is very true. I mean, the, the, the media do this. They, um, you know, they've, we've seen this so much over the last couple of years, the way they, they manipulate people's thoughts and feelings with the old, uh, the old C word, you know, the disease that's been sweeping the, the world. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah and they, really. um, the way they've been, they've. I, mean, there's, I could talk for hours about that one subject alone about how they they changed people's perceptions, they changed people's behaviour, and things like that. <coughs> um, yeah, yeah, but the manipulation was was incredible, um, mm. and uh, in in many cases it worked. But I, I think we probably should. Oh, you know, we could talk about the psychology of it, but I don't want to talk about the all the all the other stuff because they're just going to get us a, a ban and a block, and we're and we're yeah. down to one strike as it is. So we've got How long do we have to go? Strike, I don't want to use it if we don't have to. I'm tired of it. How long do we have to go, Jay? Till exactly. we get to, how long do we have to go till we get down to no strikes? I don't know. Um, I, will I think community now. guideline strikes are never lost. You never lose those. I've got one on my channel um, for for something. I don't know what I did, I and mean, they won't explain what I did, and I can't see. Any, but you know, it's. I, I know, know what you mean. Probably, You've got to be careful. You say on YouTube, haven't you? Well, we got a, we got we got one strike removed there not too long ago. We were up to, and so one has been removed. So I think the next one to be removed will be the first one. I don't know how they do it. Like uh, maybe they do it on. Uh, yeah, it's ninety days. They are removed after ninety days. The, the first yeah. one removed after ten um, is removed after you banned for ten days. Um, then you're banned for uh, if you get a second strike, it then that lasts for 90 days, and then you go back to zero strikes. Mm. So, if you don't do it again in 90 days, you go back to zero strikes. But if in that 90 days you get another strike, then you're banned for two weeks, and so the 90 day rule still applies. So, the first ban 90 days that's the probably the one that's gone away because we've gone past 90 days, so we're just on the 90 days of the second strike. But which is essentially the first try. So it's complicated, but it's YouTube, and it's not supposed to be simple. It, it used to be, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, not they don't even tell you what you do. They're horrible, but you know, they don't even tell you what you've done wrong. But um, should I talk about before I forget um, what what Maureen was talking about? Um, yes, let's, was, yeah, bring that up. Yeah, um, this, this this is very interesting. I'm, I'm, I've made a video about this, but I went to speak at Truth Seekers Northeast, with which Maureen <laughs> helps run it, and um, we they we went to. Uh, we went to Gateshead in, in on Tyneside, and we went to the site of a, what may well have been a, um, um, a UFO and alien appearance a um, long time ago, back in 1940. Uh, now, Rich Planet TV, um, this is one of the first things that Rich Planet TV did when it started out. You know, I think this is going back to like 2000 and I think it's 2008. He made uh, Richard D. Hall made this particular video. Uh, but it, he interviewed a witness, a man who is an old man now, or he was, I think he's dead now. But he was an old man at the time, and he was a young boy when this happened. And he was basically running, he used to play around in the streets of uh, Gateshead. And um, this strange object appeared, uh, like a small flying saucer, very close to the ground. And um, various extra, extraterrestrials of various kinds appeared around it, such as one that looked like uh, a Bigfoot-like creature. He, he described it looking like Chewbacca. Various greys, a, a, a dark-skinned creature, things like this. And um, he believes she was taken on board this craft. Now, uh, this is a, this is an old man speaks with a very strong Geordie uh, dialect, and um, not not you know not a very sort of ingenuous and shifty kind of guy. He's quite. Um, quite a simple sign of chap uh I've, richard I've seen, I've seen it i've seen i've seen a, a long time ago but i have seen the um the the, the video that you're talking about and i, I suppose it, I, I, I bet it's still available on richard deal's website so it is i mean you said oh, richard, richard, richard's been... to look. i mean people can sneer and say oh that's probably mm. sure it's a kid man or whatever it, you know but it's a, just it is just an interesting story and he is a really genuine guy and, it is. It's, I, um, the point I want. Sorry, I just want to get a joke in. Say I don't want for ages for like a week. I was just <laughs> going to say the uh, the fact that he saw a Chewbacca-like one, and he saw that uh, uh, some little grey ones, 
And how long ago it was, it shows you that the aliens were way ahead of us in diversity. <laughs> 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 and we know how we know how George Lucas got his ideas, don't we? <laughs> For Star Wars, well, I've not, I've not it against Star Wars. Really. <laughs> but it is it's, it is interesting that this obviously this is so long ago, no evidence. But um, apart from this witness, eyewitness testimony, I mean, there's another guy, there's Uncle Ernie. That's this is uh, another guy who was actually uh, Rob, Robert Hall's uncle. This is the uh, the witness. He whacked an alien. This alien apparently chased. This young boy and his friend up the road. Uh, there's a though his uncle only had a coal yard. Today it's somebody's garden. It's, there's no coal there. But uh, they came out of this gate. The original the original gate is still there, really old wooden gate. And he basically whacked it with a coal shovel. And it was the alien was knocked knocked out cold, probably killed. <clears throat> and um, the police basically panicked because then this was they didn't know what to do. I mean, this was just after World War Two begun, and there was a you know, there was a military parade going on the main street, and um, it hadn't. No, I mean, no one. It, this was early in the war; it hadn't really got going yet. But there were still people talking about Germans and stuff like that. The police were panicking. Obviously, this wasn't a German; this was an alien. But they uh, they picked. They apparently put it put it in a coal sack, and they took it to a nearby church. It, it's called St Cuthbert's Church, church, which is a few hundred yards away. Now, this church has a crypt you can access by a a short, very narrow flight of stairs at the side. He steps to go down into the crypt, and they kept it in this crypt apparently for, qu for quite a long time. Well, they they worked out, they contacted the Royal Air Force and asked what they were supposed to do with it, and um, eventually, apparently, the RAF turned up and moved it. But um, it was kept in the church for quite a long time. This church has been deconsecrated now, and it's um, and it's now a uh, it, it's now some kind of um, it's a place where you stay full of stained glass and uh, mirrors and things. <coughs> <coughs> there's a cough. There's a cough. <coughs> and it's, um, but it's a very nice little place. There's lots of lovely stained glass and stuff there. And we did. Maureen and I and some some of our other friends went to visit it. And we visit. We went. We did a tour of the location. I've made a video on my channel. It's called Truth Seekers Northeast Eight Off Duty, where I uh, I basically take people around with the camera and I show I show people the area. Um, Richard's own documentary, of course, Richard has been banned from YouTube now, so the, the documentary can't actually be streamed, but it can be downloaded. I think his earlier work can be downloaded from his website, and I think it may still be, be available on DVD. I'm not sure, but um, I've got some of Richard's DVDs, and um, his, his website is still there. So um, despite his ban from YouTube, he hasn't lost any material as such. It's, um, uh, do you know, uh, mentioning that fact is... Uh that um, the way that we've been uh, moved in information and uh, entertainment and things like that, it's been so easy for them to be able to then steal that back off us and not be able to watch that anymore. So I think it's important that with DVDs and things like that that you've got from the, you know, from the, I, I remember going to places and there'd be loads of people set up on desks set, selling the, the DVDs. Um, so, so, Anybody who's got all like that, you need to hang on to it. Um, and case in point, I've just bought a, a video DVD player um, yep. because I want that. You know, there's some stuff that is just you just can't find it anymore. And I know I've seen it, and I know that I've got so I've got some old DVDs that you know stuff. I've got all the all, all a lot of good videos on DVD, and I just wanted to keep hold of them. And then maybe one day when uh, uh, when things start to if in my lifetime they start to become uh, sane again um, there'll be people with uh, information they can upload and and see what we're really going on in that in, yeah. in the struggle that we've had but yeah definitely it's worth that and also um use i mean the good news is that there's um, there's kind of like the internet as i predicted is kind of splitting into two now uh, there is actually a an internet like there's an internet plus which is still which is what you might call all tech which consists of, of alternative social media sites, which have been set up specifically to counter the censorship on mainstream social media. Um, and it's worth, if you are creating content on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook, it's not its not enough. Don't put all your eggs in that basket. You can't anymore. As you can see, this, this channel has had community strikes and things like that. Um, you have to you have to go on to others as well. There's this thing such as MeWe and Minds and and BitChute and things and uh, Odyssey. Um, there's alternatives for for all the social medias, including like well, uh, we're, we're, um, the, the problem is is um, 
this, this is what um, we've got three, we're broadcasting on three different platforms we're on uh record we're on uh, facebook we're on what's that one twitch is it twitch yeah. and, gaming channel and, gaming wise and... yeah and we're we're on uh, youtube and out of the 59 people watching 58 are watching on youtube the only yeah. other person is on twitch all oh, right. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I suppose like if, if the worst came to the worst and you because you because you, you are on YouTube, if the worst came to the worst and you were um, eliminated from YouTube, you'd still be able to use other platforms. And you'll yeah, we've got a Rumble to... account in the yeah. making, um, which we need a few, uh, 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 only a few more, don't we? Subscribers to be able to come out. Oh, I think we only need uh, a couple more on Rumble, I think. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll find out now in a second. I checked the other day, actually. Yeah. And. Yeah, we're very close now. Very, very Rumble close. is very good. Rumble is kind of an alternative YouTube. And I've I've got I always use Rumble. I've got all my videos on Rumble and um and there's others like uh, Odyssey and BitChute and there's Mind, which is kind of an alternative Facebook, and there's Gab, which is kind of an alternative Twitter. Um, there's equivalent well, if every mainstream social media website there's equivalent on alt tech, these are people who could who are diametrically opposed to the censorship and ethos of um mainstream social media um i mean this is this is it's sad that this happened i mean richard richard d hall was banned from youtube immediately he was instantly banned um literally overnight when the bbc did a hit you know did an attack on him um it was literally there's no recourse you, know, you can't appeal against it you can't say hang on hang on is this fair they say no you're just gone you, you're just gone and you can put in the standard appeals, but they're just ignored. This is and, and, and all your work's got disappeared, gone. Everything all his, gone. all his YouTube work has gone. Now, this does luckily, Richard has got everything backed up. He's got his own, yeah. he's got his own cloud space on his website. So, um, nothing's lost. It's just you, you might have to download some of his videos now. Um, I had to down, I actually went to one of his, I went to watch one of his old ones. Uh, couple of weeks ago and i found it was not streaming anymore but i it just said download here and i simply downloaded it and i could watch it that way so okay. uh yeah but it's so, just goes since, since sorry um you, you'll carry on with your point but then afterwards since we're on the subject of richard deal um shall we talk about um what has happened to him um um, and, and not the aggravate, we'll not introduce the aggravating factor into it until afterwards. We until we've given enough uh, time no. to, to what's been going on with Richard. No, no, it's a perfect segue, Jason. Um, Richard, indeed, as as you know, Richard has been he's had like 15 minutes of fame, or should we say infamy, on the BBC, in the Independent, in the Daily Mirror. I think it was. Um, these articles, if you if you didn't know Richard. And, and as we know him, as we've been following him, because he's a, he's a, a content creator, researcher, activist, um, one of the best people we've got in, in those terms. Um, we, we you, you believe he was some kind of he was some kind of ragamuffin, some kind of blackguard. I mean, they say they call, they actually call him vile or something. They said I've got the actual language they use, but I did do an article about this because <clears throat> the BBC sent. Um, the BBC uh, did something called Disaster. Was it called Disaster Trolls? It was a yes, it was that a, was it, it was yeah. an episode of Panorama, um, led um, presented by the BBC's misinformation and social media correspondent. <laughs> Talk <laughs> about an Orwellian name, uh, Marianne <laughs> Spring is who's the. She's a young woman, uh, just twenty six, younger than my daughter actually. She, so she's she was she's a graduate of Pembroke College here in Oxford, and um, she. Um, She's been given a job as the BBC social media and misinformation correspondent or something something like that. Some horrible like Ministry of Truth type name. And she's basically um, this uh, this this piece of propaganda. That's what it is. Um, it's there's very little in it. It's actually factual. What you have is you, you have like um, there's a series of like vignettes and profiles of various people, the people who claim to have been. Um, injured, or they they claim to have had relatives who were killed in the Manchester Arena event, whatever that was. This event in the Manchester Arena, where there was some kind of incident involving a loud explosion and allegedly some casualties. Um, Richard has been investigating this, and he's come to the conclusion. And um, I have I've been on the I did wonder for a while, but now I'm pretty convinced there is something very suspicious about what happened at that event at that place that night. 
Something doesn't add up. But these people were there was they were basically they were they were filmed going about their business and there was like poignant music playing on the score. And they said about how they had suffered so much because people online had been attacking them and claiming that they were liars. Not Richard, not Richard himself. Richard was never accused of doing this himself. It was other people who'd been watching Richard's documentaries and reading his books. And as a result of this, then then comes the sting. They say, who is who is it? Who is this mysterious man behind this? It, 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 was it offensive and insulting? And see, was it, <laughs> it? If it wasn't so silly, it would be laugh. If, if it wasn't so offensive, it would be laughable and things like that. Richard D. Hall, former what he of uh, South Wales, and they they describe him as if he's like some kind of wanted man. You could imagine him on a poster, you know? <laughs> and um, and they they said he's he went he went to this. He went to this. Uh, he went to this marina in North Wales, where one of this one this lady works there. Apparently, she's got a she got a mutilated hand. But she apparently got in this explosion. He parked his car at the end of the driveway, and he walked up. He's wearing a dark suit, and he started sniffing. Right, it's like he's going to rob the joint. You know, it's like it's incredible. And then he, and then because he, that's what you do, you film yourself when you're robbing somewhere. <laughs> <don't> you? <laughs> and then he went. He was. He was. He decided to spy on one of the the victims. And what he did was, he he got a camera and he put it on a spike, a sh and he sharpened the spike. And it was like it was. It was almost like a vampire movie, like Richard, some kind of horrible demon or something. He, he sharpened the spike. There's a whole episode. On the, she did a radio show. She did this thing on Radio Four. And there's a, there's an episode in it called sharpening the spike, and it's uh <laughs> it's 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 an image. You know, sharpening the spike has an as an image of it's a violent image. Sharpening the spike, even the very even the very language is sibilant. You know the the uh, the, the, the pronunciation of the words, and um, it's it has this it has immediate subconscious violent connotations. But what he's doing is that the spike is actually a wooden stick, which is like a makeshift tripod. The sharp, he had to sharpen the end of it so it would stick into the ground, which he stuck in on public. It was He didn't actually trespass on anyone's home. He did this on public land, or he was planning to. He decided not to in the end. But he he, you know, he, he just stuck this thing into the ground and because he wanted to get some footage of this person who claims to be disabled. Um, and uh, so he wasn't going to... It wasn't a weapon, but the way they said, sharpening the spike. And they're, they're, anyone watching that who doesn't know Richard... Would think you know because um, you know most people don't analyze things they just absorb and they're very very susceptible to this highly emotional emotionally charged material all the, the the most effective propaganda does not try to persuade it doesn't give you fake facts what it does instead it generates very intense emotions in its target in, in its target population it, it it hits you through the heart rather than the head and this is exactly that kind of propaganda. It attacks through the heart. It made you yeah, feel enormous. It, it, what, viewers, what you yeah, sorry, go on. It's going to say the view of the view was intended to feel enormous sympathy for the for these poor people who've been harassed online and been called names and things like that. And they've had you know horrible hate mail sent to them. And then when 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 people are basically dabbing their eyes and thinking, how awful, how could they get poor people? Oh, then comes the sting. The nasty old Mr. Hall. He's the Vladimir Putin of the, of, he's the new Vladimir Putin. This guy, you know, he did this horrible. It's that it's because of him that this is all happening. And you know what? This is, I predicted this would happen because of what happened to Alex Jones in the United States. Do you remember? Sorry, Jason, you wanted to say something. I'll come on to that. No, no, no. Carry you on. carry on. No, I, I, oh, I, I was just going to make the point is that the okay. emotional stuff, right? Because when you're when you're sat watching summer, the emotional stuff is. Is there? It's designed so that that just takes all your barriers down because you feel sorry for that person. Yes. And then once those barriers are down, they can then just bombard, put so much dog shit into your mind. And because you're you're, you're thinking on an emotional level, and your guard's gone, it's gone really. You know, people yeah. tell you, oh, if you're in an emotional state, and, and that's what they do. And it's uh, it's. It's horrendous, but no, sorry. Yeah, it's absolutely true. There's absolutely there was zero factual information in this in this documentary in, at all. <clears throat> there was literally no attempt to, to to address any of the points that Richard makes. Uh, at one point, they actually they actually go up and harass Richard in his workplace, which is a market stall in Merthyr Tudville, um, in South Wales, and um, Richard very sensibly refuses to speak to them. I mean, he's absolutely right not to never ever speak to these people. Just tell them to go away because they will they will never give you a fair hearing. It's a kangaroo court. 
Um, so there's absolutely no, there was absolutely zero uh, faction information at all. And this is exactly, you see, I said just to literally a few months earlier, Alex Jones was in court. He's been in court several times over the last few years because he's been now being held responsible for the harassment of a group of people who claim to be the the parents of some children killed in the, should we call it Shady Nook? The sh a school shooting. Now, this is, I'll call it Shady Nook. I won't say what it actually is because, uh, because for obvious reasons. Now, these, um, these people who claim to be these parents um, have decided to sue Alex. They decided to sue him for basically, again, hate mail, harassment, abuse that they've been receiving. Um, vandal you know, their houses have been vandalized, things like this. They've had to move house, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. One guy apparently killed himself. Um, and now Alex, again, you get the same. Sh Alex himself was not accused of doing this himself. Now he was accused of breaching the Data Protection Act by revealing the someone's address accidentally on his show. But um, he was up in court. These people actually sued him. They ended up with a. They ended up getting a ruling. I think it's a record-breaking lawsuit. I think it was over a billion dollars. He was actually found mm. liable. They actually claimed over a billion dollars. Of course, he'll never pay that, but basically his entire income for the rest of his life is now forfeit to these people. And I suddenly realized this is how – this is a new tactic they're using. It's outsourced lawfare. They've, they've given up trying to pass laws and things like that, especially with the, with the online harms bill being basically defeated for now. Um so they, they, what they're doing instead is they're getting these litigious paramilitaries to do it for them through uh, civil cases. And they're not, they're not attacking, they're not passing laws to ban you, but they're getting, you're getting people who speak out against their agenda and question their narrative are being harassed. They're being basically ruined and harassed. They, they're, the attempt is to just basically hit you hit you in the wallet with all these lawsuits to ruin you to ruin you to destroy your business to destroy your livelihood to to make you a, a pauper that's how they're doing it what they're hoping is that alex will alex jones will now be so impoverished he won't be able to continue what he's doing richard now i, I predicted they're going to do they're going to keep they're going to do this somewhere else they're going to do this to other people they're going to try it in britain and i predicted it would be david ike that they did it to now, David Icke has already been sued already in, by a Canadian chap whose name I won't mention because he is very litigious. Um, but I think they're going to do it again. They're going to try to try on David Icke. But no, they chose Richard D. Hall instead. And, and it's this outsourced lawfare. I wouldn't be surprised if at some point there is going to be a lawsuit against Richard. He is going to have to go to court. And the attempt will be to destroy, to ruin him, to destroy Rich Planet and what he does. And this is simply because they want to shut down this information. They want to, firstly, they want to stop people having access to this information. And secondly, they want to, they want this to be a slave crucified on the road to Rome, to warn the other slaves not to revolt. They're saying to, they're saying, look, look what we're doing to Alex Jones and Richard D. Hall. If you question our narrative to you, again, this is what we're going to do to you. They're, they're talking to people like us, and I got a feeling them um, they're going to try this with Richard. You won't see. It's um. It's horrible. It's a horrible thing. I think it's really nasty. I think Richard doesn't deserve this. I think he's been grossly mistreated. He lost his stall in the market, of course. Yeah. Again, a lot of what the BBC does, these people, these um, <coughs> these damn propagandists, is they rely on the cowardice and stupidity of third parties. They knew, all Mariana Spring knew, that all she had to do was call YouTube and said, get rid of this man for me, would you? I'm an important BBC journalist. Said, yes, madam. Yes, madam. We'll do it straight away. Same with the management of the Merthyr Tudville market. I, when, when they announced that Richard Stall had been shut down and they basically kicked him out, they'd sacked him. Again, I was just sort of like, I shrugged my shoulders and said, of course they're going to do that. And I bet, they didn't, I bet they didn't even ask to hear Richard's side of the story. It, it, it's almost like uh, it, YouTube's got too big. You know, like then they just say, oh, get rid of YouTube. Whereas 15 years ago, if they'd have said, get rid of Richard Deal's YouTube channel, they'd have said, you're going to need a, a warrant, you know, a lawsuit yeah. to be able to do that. But because YouTube's the only show in town, it sort of can do what it wants. And it just thinks, well, yeah, OK, I'll do it. Well, YouTube you know? is now owned by Google, you see. It used, to, it, used to, it used to be independent. It was set up by some guys who sold it to Google. That's when they yeah. sold it to Google, it started to go wrong. YouTube used to be like BitChute and Odyssey. It used to be like these old tech sites. It was a, it was a, it was a haven for free speech. The entire internet in the the first decade or two decades of the internet, it was a, oh, from the early nineties when it first began. 
it was called the Wild West of it was the New Wild West, wasn't it? It was it was this is better than the printing press. That's what they called it. And then they found a way to get the genie back in the bottle, and this is by basically setting up these these Silicon Valley giants and then selling everything off to them. So yeah, unfortunately, um, Richard had no Richard didn't have a chance against these people. He lost his channel almost immediately. I mean, I I went and checked his channel. This was before I even watched the panorama. It was gone. Richard's channel was gone, and I'm like, yeah. And then uh, it's it was a horrible documentary. I don't know what the hell Neil Sanders was thinking of. It was like because of course Neil Sanders was in it. Um, Neil um, Neil actually was on the he was in the radio show first, and he was also there was three outlets to this. There was the radio show <clears throat> on chat. I was on Radio Four, Mariana Springs show. It was like a it was separated into short. It was short short-term programs of like 20 minutes then there was an article on, BBC, on the bbc website and then there was the tv program the tv program was by far the worst uh neil sanders who used to be one of richard's sort of inner circle his favorite few because richard basically turned his back on everybody else apart from like a handful of people uh, andrew johnson neil, <laughs> neil sanders and that's about it really but neil um Neil went on the BBC and to, 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 was lured into doing this program, which was just, um, yeah, it's. I'm really sorry about that, Ben. Um, you okay, mate? Uh, yes, I'm. I'm fine. It, it, it's uh, it, it, it's me, me, me mate. Adi is uh, the bloke who had a stroke. He used to be on the show. He used to do the show, mm. but I rang him up earlier on. Um, and uh, he didn't answer. Now he's rung me back while I'm live, and I'm just uh, trying to explain to him. You know, just uh, you know, I'm just on the phone and he's trying to talk to me. Because mm. anyway, so I, and I don't want to hang up on him. And, and no, is he okay? I hope he's okay. I hope he's oh okay. yeah, he's fine. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. He was just returning me call. It's just that when he starts talking, it doesn't stop. <laughs> so, yeah. Always so, uh, mentioned Richard. Richard also talks about Madeline McCann and things like that. Um, and the you know what the c word. Um. Yeah, there's Richard talks. Richard has come up with an awful lot of excellent information that really calls into question in, on a huge level some of the most significant news stories of the last few years, and they don't like it. They, they don't like the fact he's questioning these that he's uh, questioning and things. So that's right, Maureen. I was just talking about Neil. Neil Sanders went on to this program. Yes, um, let's get to Neil. Let's let's yeah, start with okay. yeah. Go, let's go. <laughs> Neil, see, Neil was like one of the Richard uh, it, in the last uh, few years. And when, when Richard started out with Rich Planet, I, I like met him, and I was actually on his show a couple of times. And um, um, he was quite. I think he, I have to say, his personality changed quite considerably after that. And he kind of turned his back on everyone, nearly everybody. And he 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 seemed to develop, I think, quite a low opinion of all, literally almost everybody. But there were a few people he still was willing to work with um, Andrew Johnson most significantly, but also there were several others. And one of those was Neil Sanders who now I think Neil, Jason, you said Neil has been on your show and I've seen him on your show. I've interviewed him a couple of times. And he used to be, Neil used to be a uh, very interesting researcher into mind control. I and mean, he's got a book called you, he's several volumes actually called your thoughts are not your own, which I read, I read one of them and I thought it was very good. I thought it was very interesting. And yeah, it's that's yeah. Now those are good books, but since then he seems to have he seems to have taken a different turn now because when I I, I still see him, I'm still friends with him on Facebook and I follow his stuff. He started like saying coming out with things that really put him just one notch above the skeptics. He's got together with someone called Brent Lee, who is uh, by his own admission an ex conspiracy theorist who's now seen the light, and they do a, a like a YouTube video. They do a YouTube video series called um, "Your." It's called "Not Some." Dare call it conspiracy. It's on YouTube, and um, yeah, where they basically just—it's pretty clear that Neil has pretty much changed his mind on everything, and um, he's really become very, very much a skeptic. Do you think he's and, hypnotized himself? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, I mean, the fact that he went on the BBC, he had anything to do with the BBC, um, indicates that perhaps he didn't take the advice. <laughs> he didn't take his own advice. I mean, surely he knows better than anyone else. He should know better than anyone else. What you know, he knows what the media are like. That's because that they were going to um, that he was go he was he was going to be treated badly. I mean, 
Neil, she, a lot of people, Neil's had a lot of, um, Neil's taken, has been attacked badly over this. I think, he, and I actually, I disagree with a lot of some of the people who don't, who turned against Neil because of this. I think Neil's intention, from what I gather, was to do good. What he, what he wanted to do, in my view, I know you're going to disagree with me, was to yeah, act well, as, a, sorry, as a character yeah. witness for Richard. He wanted to act as a character witness for Richard. I actually spoke to him privately about this, and he basically said, yeah, I, I wanted to be a positive character witness for Richard. But really, what did? How is he? how on earth did he think he would do that by cooperating with the BBC? What was he thinking? How could he be so naive as to think, oh, I'll go on the BBC, I'll stand up for Richard, and the BBC will represent me fairly. They'll put my side across. When the, when the TV documentary came out, he was furious. He said these people completely, you know, they edited me badly. They only included a fraction of what I said. And my response is, Neil, what do you expect? Did you expect them to treat you better? I'm on the radio show. He's, he's, there's a lot more of his stuff on there. But really, I mean, maybe we could talk about Neil and what his motives are with us. Maybe you guys have different views. I think you do. Well, I, I, all, all I say um, is Neil is very fortunate to have a friend like you because... <laughs> Um, I lost every ounce of respect. And I did have a lot of respect for Neil. I've been on this show. We'd had arguments about all sorts of things, about, you know, the, the, the words we can't talk about. We'd had all sorts of arguments on one side or the other, but it always ended up always a good-natured. Um, and uh, sometimes I didn't uh, I, I didn't challenge him enough, and perhaps I should have done, but I just wanted him to... Um, I, it, it, it seemed... And I said after, I said after I spoke to him, I said he's trying to change his, uh, he's, he's trying to change his image. He's mm. trying to turn from one thing to another. And uh, he's seen that there's nothing, no money in this. There's no money in 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 this. And he's not, or whether it's money or ego or, you know, this show has the same amount of uh, listeners, um, viewers since it started. So you know we're, we're we're not looking for more. We're just we're just here doing what we do, and that wasn't enough for him. That's why he's gone and done his own podcast. That's why he went on to the BBC because he got his podcast. If you listen to the the Radio Four interview, he got his podcast mentioned. So he's going to get some exposure from that. Not very much from what I've seen, but I've not not really looked into any numbers. But he's probably he's probably not got the amount of. Uh, subscribers or, or people watching his shows as he, he hoped he would do from that so maybe he regrets that but again it's a for me it's it's a it, it's a pretty shitty move because you knew he, he would he would be the one on uh, two years three years ago telling you that the BBC will lie and do you know yeah. they'll manipulate you and they'll do all this and then he claims that he wanted to stand up for Richard. The best way to stand up for Richard is none of us would comment and say about anything about at yeah. all about him. Because if you don't say anything about him, there's no bad words. They can't manipulate it. They can't do anything. He did it for purely for the attention, and he thought it was going to make his his have a, a big some call it conspiracy. That, that you know the people who watch that stuff. It's a very small amount of people. It's a very small amount of people that watch that stuff. It's you know, his own, yeah, his own. Well, his own, he's, I don't know how much money he's making now. He's got this quite small YouTube channel with Brent Lee and he does this, he does this show with Brent Lee. But some I mean, the BBC, you know, I, I can't, maybe, I mean, I do, I do, maybe I do give, I, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. I'm that kind of person. But um, it could be you're right. It could be that this is simply he's he's simply an opportunist. It could be that this is it could be that he is simply an opportunist. I, I, when he told me, he actually said that he wanted to do something positive for Richard. However, if that's true, then um, you know this seems a strange way to go about it. As you said, he he's someone I'm surprised decided to take this particular route to stick up for Richard. He'd have been much better off, like writing his own publication and publishing it on his own, on his own, um, his own platform, like I did, because I, I wrote that, an yeah. article about Richard. I did a video about Richard. Uh, basically, I was trying, I was trying to defend him from all this. Um, Neil, the idea that I would, that I would, I mean, I, 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 Neil, she really ought to know better. The idea that I would try and say, well, I'll stick up for Richard. I'll help Richard by going. And by cooperating with the kangaroo court that's trying to smear him 
and think that somehow I can ride this dragon and turn it into something different. Neil, there's Neil. I'm so really su surprised that Neil didn't realize that's impossible, and that mm. you know he has discredited himself completely. And maybe he doesn't care. Maybe because he's now sort of a skeptic, he doesn't care anymore. In fact, he's actually he and Brent actually interviewed Mariana Spring on their show. I don't know if you saw that. But, um, they did an interview with Mariana Spring herself, um, right. which was kind of like uh, which yeah, which they didn't really ask her any tough questions. <clears throat> yeah, they didn't ask her any really tough questions. They asked her. They asked her. They asked her a few critical things. They didn't really ask her the kind of questions I would have asked her. Like you know, um, I, well, I they, I would have been. I think I'd have been much more aggressive with her. But uh, but um, but so I, I I don't know who's right or who's wrong here, Jason. I mean, one thing we're both certain of here, whatever his motives, he has um, he's done no good at all. He's done nothing to help Richard at all. He's discredited himself, and. Um, I don't think I don't think Richard's very happy. But I doubt if Richard's very happy about that with him right now. Um, so uh... no, 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 and uh, it, it's it's a shame because I, I did I did like him. And, and listen, if Neil, if you hear this, uh, which you probably will, I, I've got a feeling mm -hmm. um, you, you're welcome to come on. And if you want to make your case, you're welcome to come on to this show and we can debate it. Um, you know, but. Uh, uh, that's just my uh, that's just my that's just my take and you, your your take is is different and it's you know we can all we all have our own opinions and it's fine mm, yeah, yeah. So and i'm totally on. agnostic you know i'm totally agnostic because i don't know nothing about really any of them so <laughs> i don't give a fuck you know it's like but i know richard d hoff and watch some of his videos of him but i don't know anything about neil not at all and uh well, well i'd love to know more well, he used to he used to be doing like um, like I say, he used to be I thought quite a switched on dude. And like that book, if you read that book, it's really quite extensively researched. He Neil's done other books. He's done a books about um Charles Charles Manson and things like that. And um, I've interviewed him myself a couple of times. Um, I mean, if he's unfortunately if he has turned skeptic, and people do. I mean, unfortunately, in this business, people change their minds about things. We don't mm. choose our beliefs. Um, ben Brentley himself said, "I used, he used to be a, he used to, I used to be a conspiracy theorist, and now I've seen the light, and I've, I've seen through it, and I've recovered." It's what he says. He says, "Was he said from 2002 to like 2018, I was a rabid conspiracy theorist, but now, then I realized, I, you know, I woke up, and of course, both sides in this conflict, you know, we make converts from each other, and we don't." And, I, I I wish I, I wish I wish him all the best. I hope that he, whatever journey he's on, obviously if his if his if his intentions are noble um, and not mercenary, as you claim, Jason. Um, if if his intentions are noble, and I hope he finds some some way through this. I think he's made a huge mistake, and I hope he sees that. I hope he realizes that. But um, it could be this is just the, the path he's on. So be it. I'm. I'm not going to. Yeah, I, yeah. I won't be going with him. I'm. I think I've listened to the other side of the story, and I think it's wrong. I think the other side is wrong. I think he's making a huge mistake. And going on the damn BBC, I mean, is the biggest mistake <laughs> of all. If they came to me, if they approached me, I would basically. T I, I won't repeat what I would say to them. But there's no way I don't think to do with it. They have. I've. I've, been, yeah. I've had offers to be on mainstream TV. Do you, do you remember that and conspiracy? What was it conspiracy theory road trip? Do you remember that? It was yes, made by some yeah, 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 off the yeah. fence production. Yeah, off the fence productions. It was called. It was made for the BBC by Off the Fence Productions. They did a pilot one about nine eleven where Charlie Veach and a couple of other people. I don't know what you call them. Contestants, victims. <laughs> they were taken to the various places on nine eleven. They were. Sh it was the usual thing. They. Sh they were. Sh they were. They met the grieving relatives again. Emotion. 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 You know. Shame on you. Guilt. 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 <laughs> see, to see if they could. <coughs> the presenter was this guy Andrew Maxwell, an Irish comedian, um, to, to try and change their minds. And there was a, like there was a follow up series, a three part follow up series. There was one about seven seven, one about UFOs, one about evolution and creationism. And they asked me to be on the the follow. -up. I think it was either it was obviously it was either the it was either the seven seven one or the UFO one. I, I'd have been on. They asked me to be on it, and I said, "Well, I'll be on." They said. And I said, "Well, could you could you show me your could you show me your program plan, your proposal to the commissioning editor of the BBC, please?" They said, mm. um, "No, they 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 didn't write back." 
No. <laughs> I said, could, would you be willing to enter into negotiations leading to me being given some editorial control of the program? Because I'm going to be on this thing. You know, I'm, I'm, the, I'm in the ingredients in the broth, but you have the recipe <laughs> book. Can I see the recipe book, please? Nope. So, no. <laughs> there's, I mean, I wouldn't have gone. I mean, there's no way I would have gone on there because I'd, I'd have, they would never have met my conditions, of course, because they wanted to make a hit piece. And they did. Because the people who went on there, Tony Topping, Frankie Ma, these are people I know, you know, friends of mine, um, a guy called Darren Perks. There was a couple of other people I didn't know. You know, they bitterly regret it. They all bitterly regret being on there. And, and I, um, t uh, t you know, I, I, I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't go have anything to do with them. Have nothing to do with these people. Yeah. They're not there to, to listen to you and find out about you. They'll say things like that and say, we, we want to hear you. We want to know all about you. This is a program exploring the details of this of, the, of this, this amazing world you live in, of this these amazing ideas you have. We, we want to listen. We want to learn. Yeah, this is, this is going to be a, we want this to be a, a true enlightening experience for our viewers <laughs> and of course when you see the program you realize it's nothing of the sort <laughs> it's nothing of the sort there was this thing called there was this other thing called the, the great ufo conspiracy um plum pictures yeah this was they basically went went along to um they went along to My miles johnston's conference the bases conference and uh, miles was on it and he was he was on it and um he i think miles again thinks he can ride this dragon and I said to him, I said to him, Miles, you know what they're gonna, you know what this is gonna be like. You know what they're gonna do to you, don't you? And he says, in, in the long run, it'll be all right. I'll make some. I'll I'll take advantage of this. But of course, <laughs> they didn't, oh, as soon as they turned up at the conference, I said, I, I signed a form saying you not to depict me in any way. I don't want to be in any frame. I don't want my voice to appear on the soundtrack. I want I want absolutely no presence at all in this documentary. I was absolutely determined they were not going to, I was not going to be in any way. And yeah. when I watched it, I was bloody glad. Yeah. I was bloody <laughs> relieved. I dodged, I really dodged a bullet there. I'll tell you. Every, anyone who's been on mainstream television is a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the stars in his eyes. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I've been away that long. I just, I don't know. Uh, da, 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 wow. Let's have a look at some of these. Oh, right. What, what, Wigan Joker. Uh, good evening, Jimmy O. Um, have a listen. He, he wants to know where, what you think of Sam Smith's satanic ritual at the Grammys. Oh, bloody, um, was that the one where, was that the guy where there was this, like, there was this crush in the audience and a few people got hurt? No, a couple of no, days that was, ago. That was a wrap-up, um, wasn't it? Oh, the Emmy Awards. The no, Emmy no, Awards. It, 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 oh, was that where they all turned up wearing red? They were all dressed in some yeah. red suits. Mm. Yeah, I didn't see yeah. much about that. I saw a glimpse of it, but I saw these people all come on. They all had these and weird you had red that, dresses. You had, that, you had that follow Madonna with the big, big booby woobies and dudes. <laughs> kind of look, Madonna kind of hot like you know, <laughs> Madonna looks like she's uh, she's been like turning into a bloody homunculus. I mean, she looks awful. You know, she's she melting. Is. Yeah. Somebody put her in the microwave by mistake. <laughs> oh God, she's like bloody. She, she's like. It, she's, it's like Michael Jackson, you know. Mm. Do you remember Michael Jackson got started? He went crazy with the plastic surgeon. Of course, he ended up turning into a complete freak. And um, and of course, like Madonna's doing the same thing. It's weird. I mean, the Hollywood this this Hollywood um, life. I'm, I thank God I'm not a part of it. I really am. I mean, if Neil Sanders is looking for fame and fortune, I think he's looking for a life of misery. He really is, because if he, if he gets involved in this, he's gonna he's, he's gonna regret it even more. I'll tell you. Um, they, we, you know, we've heard about things, people like uh, Corey Feldman, Elijah Wood. These are two young boy actors, and they were like talking about the pool parties they went to when there was where all the producers were. Yeah, and. Um, you see, like uh, Demi Moore kissing that young boy, and thinking it's like it's just normal. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, God, is if if they think this is normal, what kind of life are these people leaving? What what kind of things do they get up to in in Hollywood, in in private? What's it actually like to be one of these stars? I mean, is it really the bed of roses? People think it is. How come so many of them turn to drugs and alcohol and end up dying in you know in their forties? Good point. It can't be that much fun. I mean, it's... <laughs> yeah. But and then but, uh, you have these satanic things. <clears throat> Sorry, Jimmy, go on. 
Yeah, I was just wanted to go back quickly just to Alex Jones. Um, you were talking about about the families who were suing him. Did you know that there was no families involved in that lawsuit, and that there were two people involved, a man and a woman? The, 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 the only one that I know about was an FBI agent. So there were actual really? no family members involved in that lawsuit against Jones. Oh, I thought. See, I I, I saw them coming into court as witnesses, and I assumed they were the plaintiffs. No, were they not? No. Well, that makes it even more suspicious, doesn't it? Yeah. That makes well, it even more suspicious. Well, they stitched up, didn't they? they? They stitched him up like a kipper. And they, they, yeah. exactly what they're, they're going to do to somebody in this country, whether it's Richard Deal or whether it's uh, David Icke or, or, or whoever it may be, um, you know. Mm. I don't like Jones. I, I really hate the guy. And But to be honest, like... I. I don't trust. I don't trust the whole case. It's like, and a lot of the a lot of the uh, forward-thinking lawyers and uh, constitutional lawyers will say quite when this eventually gets to a higher court that it will be thrown out, and that you know. I but I don't trust drones. I don't like him, and I never will like him. And uh, just <laughs> we'll maybe park that there. But that's a uh, personal shit. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, it was, well, I mean, I, I I've had a personal falling out with Richard D. Hall. You know, I mean, he called me a. He was—he called me an effing servant of the mainstream media once when I disagreed with him. So I, <laughs> I, uh, so of course, I mean, of course, I've got my personal issues with many people, but um, I think as you, I can separate—I think I can separate the personal from the professional in this case. I mean, I know I don't get on with everyone. My personality clashes with some people's, as as is always the case. But do they, do they really deserve this? No, they, I don't think they deserve this, Jimmy. I mean, Alex, I don't think. Alex has objectively done anything that makes me think he deserves what's happened to him, but despite his errors, despite his 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 buffoonery at times. I sometimes think to myself, well, does he really? He, he's had all this, he's basically they're trying to shut him down. They're trying to stop him doing info wars. Basically, that's the purpose of it: is to silence him and ruin his life. Uh, I no, thought the he... interesting thing about the whole case was what well, what came out about the structure of the uh, of the Jones Empire and how. Where all the all the companies that were being sued were basically there was there was no monetary value to any of them at all, and that like all the Jones funds were sort of like somewhere on the Cayman Islands and in an account that can't be sort of like. Oh, <laughs> right. so he's, he's, he's done the old tax haven thing. Yeah, he's a, yeah, he's, he's got an old haven thing going. He can't be touched, you know. So either way, he's he's good to go. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm, I think I, I mean, despite his despite his. I mean, I have some problems with him as well. I think he's a, you know, he, he's he's done some real car crashes. He's done some real car crashes in his time, but um, you know, he I'm, I can't help him if he gets away with this. I'll be quite pleased. Not least because I think the people doing this lawsuit are deceitful. I think they, uh, I think Alex does have a case. He has and many other research, not just Alex Jones. People like Sophia Smallstorm. Um, and others who have put together a case that we should be suspicious about what happened at Shady Nook. I mean, Sophia Smallstorm comes from that area. I mean, she did this thing called uh, Shady Nook in Five Dimensions, which, of course, is banned from YouTube, but you can get it on all the social, all the old tech sites. Um, but she said that she comes from that area. She actually lived near Newtown, and um, she used to ride her bike, bike along those lanes near where the, the school was alleged to be. And she said... You know, she doesn't recognise any of the surnames of the people from that area. The, the, she says these were not local families, things like that. Um, and she goes into a great deal of detail of, of the, the evidence that was put put across, some of which I can I can understand too because I have experience with the emergency services, a considerable experience, 23 years experience. And I do admit there's something a bit, there was something a bit odd went on there. And we should be suspicious. And... Um, of course, Alex has also been saying that, and now the response it seems from the state is now to because they don't want us questioning these narratives about any of these things. I mean, you, uh, I, you same goes you, for nine eleven and stuff like that. You know, nine eleven, seven seven, you name it. If you if you if you if you're a cynical person, if you were a cynical person, that you'd, you'd say that it's pretty obvious that Alex Jones got very big very quickly. Um, I remember back in the old days, um, doing his old podcasts and stuff like that, and I, I'd listen to him, and he got very big. I, I, I don't know if you were cynical, you might think he'd been bought at some point, and then he'd been uh, been doing uh, his bidding, whatever particularly he wanted to, and then it got to the point where he is now 
where you pay us back. There's a show trial. Obviously, he's squirreled loads of money everywhere mm. else. Uh, there's a show mm. trial. Um, Jones either is, <laughs> he wins or he loses, depending on what script they've got going, I don't know. Um, and then one day he disappears into prison, federal prison, and uh, th then... Um, <laughs> then... Uh, oh, oh, God, then the re-emerges as... Uh, Oh, Imu died of 34, that, uh, that, that comedian. Not Bill Hicks. Um, no, the comedian, Williams, the, 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 you mentioned him earlier on, Bill, Bill Hicks, yeah. Bill Hicks. He, he oh, yeah. was Bill Hicks. Yeah. Suddenly, Bill Hicks no. were all actually alive the whole time. It was just... A, it, it, nah, it's, it's, I don't think Alex Jones is Bill Hicks. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> oh, no, I know. I just <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Alex, it's, it's true. The last couple of years, Alex Jones has gone quite conventional. He's um, He doesn't tackle some of the subjects he used to. He tends to focus more on mainstream politics now. So in that way, he's um, he's no real. He's not really that much different from Glenn Beck or Tucker Carlson. I mean, there's a role for that. There's a role for um, you know dis people in this in this very left wing dominated world. There is a role for people who are simply like right wing conventional politicians to to, to have a, a place. I mean, there is in this country as well. We have we have people like Neil Oliver, you know, and um, on GB News and things like that. And um, so there's there's a role for that, and I do enjoy GB News. I watch GB News, but of course there's areas they won't go, which I would like to see them go. There's areas what do you I'd think, like to see. Uh, what do you think about what's going on with uh, this? Is it Mark Stein or Alex Stein? That's uh, that this latest development where he's not allowed to broadcast anymore on GB, or he maybe he's left because of some change in the contract, or this, um, there's something about defibrillators. Have you been keeping up with this story? I don't know. I know Mark Stein. I mean, I've watched his program um, a couple of times, um, and I, you know, it's it's nice it's nice to hear the other side of the story when because you know there's there's so much um, in the mainstream now. It's just again and again you just say, oh, white people are evil. You know, men are men are sexist and things like this, and, and I just get so fed up with that. It's just such a breath of fresh air just to to watch someone say. And Mark, Mark Stein was one of these people who said otherwise. And of course, with the c word. They were so good. I mean, Neil Oliver, I mean, he's just, that guy's become a national treasure. And um, his, <laughs> his reckon, slots yeah? on GB News were getting like more, they were overtaking the BBC and ITV, which shows that oh, the, how much I, I have a bad it. feeling. I have and, a bad feeling. The chat are going to start the, the, flaming, the thing, you know. <laughs> well, that, that's up to them. But I mean, I, I, I believe, I, I, if they disagree with me, they disagree with me, fair, fair enough. But I think Neil Oliver like the one with a beard. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the Scottish guy with a big long hair. Uh, you know, he used to do. Co he used to uh, break the coast. Uh, co what is it called? Uh, some historical program. What was it called? Coastal Britain or something like that. Yeah, he used. To, I, I tell you what. The thing about him is, is when he's doing one of his monologues, um, it sounds like he's reciting a poem by some famous Scottish, you know, uh, uh, Scottish poet. You know, that he's, that's that's how he sounds. Is you know, with his his. His, his accent's so crisp and uh, yeah, he's, he's very good. Real, yeah, real he's trained as an actor, I think. And and you see, like as as much as I as much as I would, as I would like him to talk about other things, but, yeah, you know, I, I'm not I'm not one of these people who demands ideological purity from every single person in in the media. I don't sort of sit there and I just say, right, if you don't talk about nine eleven and seven seven, I don't want anything to do with you. Because yeah. if they, I'm not one of these people. I think, well, if they're going to say something, even if it's just something that's mildly, mildly kind of like a dissident, I'm willing to listen to them, and I do respect these people. See what I mean? I do. Yeah, well, you've got Neil you've Oliver. Got to, you've got to take out all all information in, haven't you? And, and yeah. then make, make your own decision about everything. Sorry, go on, Jim. No, I was just going to mention about Neil Oliver. He seems to have. A great grasp of language and linguistics and and a monologue a great monologue like like just like our favorite communist uh, george galloway like he's got this way of rolling his oars and comes on with his top hat he, he just fits all ticks all the boxes like and you know he sucks you in with this like uh with this verbal linguistics and I, i'm not against any of them like you know but i don't know i'm, I'm Galloway, though, I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit standoffish with him. Like, but Neil Oliver, I don't mind that. No, he doesn't like you either. 
The, the Scots <laughs> like that. They, they think the Scots do have the gift of the gab. You know, it's a Scottish thing, this oral tradition they have with poetry and song and stuff. You know, it's like <laughs> maybe it's something, it is a Scottish thing. But they do, I mean, they both have, again, George Galloway, I do watch it. I disagree with a lot of his stuff and I do watch his program on, he does this, he does this to Sputnik. He does this on, on a, well, RT's RT. banned now, yeah. But of course, yeah. you can still the thing is you can never completely ban anything these days. That's what's so good about the internet. You can you can hmm. you can push it into a into one of the uh, in, onto Internet Two, which is what they've done. Uh, so, so you can get RT on Internet Two, and I do watch that because um, I like my daily dose of Russian misinformation personally. You know? <laughs> Yeah, you got to get your misinformation from all sides, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. There was a time, you see, when we when we were treated as intelligent adults and we were allowed to make up our own mind. I mean, that's the whole idea. And now we have people like Mariana Spring saying things like, "Well, no, they're um, you know, you, you're impressionable children, and we need to, we need to, we have we have this paternalistic kind of like control we want of you." You know, this is this is kind of how the media treat us viewers now and make, i think they've always had that attitude it's just they are it's become more pronounced in the last couple of years and i think it's because like as i said on previous shows with jason they uh the bad guys are really rushing now they, they appear to be um in a hurry to get get this all done and that's good that's that's a good sign it means they they something has yeah. really unsettled them and this is why I think they're striking out at Richard D. Hall and Alex Jones and these people as well. They, they're getting there's terrified. Of stuff on, isn't there? um, what, what do you think about um, the Gareth Ike interviewing Tommy Robinson? I've not seen it, you know. I know Tommy. I've, I've, not, seen the, I've not seen the interview, but I, I did know. I did know that. Uh, Gareth Ike interviewed uh, Tommy Robinson, and they were quite yeah. buddy. It was on Icon Iconic, yeah. Tommy was on Iconic. I, I didn't see that. No, I didn't see it. Um, but I'd, I'd be interested to watch it. I mean, Tommy Robinson's another. He's a guy I, I, I don't think that guy's really understands much about how the world works. I think he's been driven into a frenzy by some of the injustices in this world. Um, you know what's being done to children and things like that. But um, he strikes me as a little, he's sort of more hot-headed than analytical. Do you know what I mean? Uh, that's how he comes across. Yeah. Um, but I'd be I'd be interested to see the I'd be interested to see the the the. Let's 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 not go there. Um, <laughs> let's, what's what's happening in the uh, world of UFOs? We've not even talked any UFOs really, apart from that. <laughs> not yeah, that's right. Well, well uh, earlier on, uh, what's going on in the UFO world, and has it all calmed down? Well, it's, I thought it had, you see. I mean, I, I actually did my New Year's UFO report on Pan Road TV, and it was called, Is That So? Is That It? Because, like, nothing really happened for ages. There was this UAP report that was supposed to come out from the U.S. Department of Defense, and, um, and I thought that it was been delayed. And at the same time, there was this horrible article in Washington Post by a guy called Julian Barnes, which was it was a it had all the conviction of Doug and Dave doing a soundbite about swamp gas. It was it was literally that it was it was a kind of it had this kind of it had that tone to it. It was kind of oh all this fuss for the last five years we finally worked out what it is. It's Chinese drones. It's ch yeah, and it's it did, they didn't say Chinese lanterns. I was almost expecting them to say that. Hey, guess what, guys? It's Chinese drones. And so that's it. That it had that kind. Of, it did have this kind of case closed um, tone to it. And of course, this went out on all the uh, all the. It went out on all the uh, channels and things like that. And and it, it was deliberately. You could see it was designed to, to 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 turn people's interest away from the subject. And I was a victim of this myself, way back in the nineties, because I, I like everyone else in the sort of late eighties when when I was a kid. I was in. I was really fascinated by crop circles because they were suddenly everywhere in the news. And then Doug and Dave came out and they did. The, they made a simple formation on in broad daylight in a field, and said, well, and, and the headline came out, fooled you, and I, I fell for that. I believed it. I believed that. Well, that's it. That's that's the end of that mystery. Then what? A, what a shame. What's on the other station? But of course, that was it. Was a lie, and this is a lie too. And literally, just hours after I. I published that video. Then suddenly the Daily Fail, I mean, normally they're awful. The Daily Mail 
published this amazing uh, interview with Jacques Vallée, and it, uh, and it was all about Jacques Vallée and his latest book. He, he's co-authored a book called Trinity with Paula Harris. <clears throat> and um, it's all about um, a possible like crash retrieval event that took place two years before Roswell in, in July of 1945. And... I, I read this article. I couldn't believe it. I mean, sure, my expectations of the mainstream media can't really be undercut. But I thought, this is better than I expected it to be. They had interviews with the witnesses. They had interviews with Jacques and with Paula talking about this. And at the same time, it was announced um, that the the new, what's it called? It keeps changing its name. It's called Arrow now. Um, A-A-R-O, what used to be ATIP, WhatsApp. They then announced... That they're pushing back. They originally planned to do their analysis of UFO events from the beginning of Project Sign, which was in basically late 1947. They announced, no, they're going to push it back two years to 1945. Why? What difference does it make? It was such a long time ago. Why do they suddenly want those two extra years? And so I thought that was really remarkable. And, and then other things happened as well. Do you know, there's this photo came out of the, the, the Calvine UFO. Do you, do you remember that? No. The Calvine. Now, this happened in 1990. A some a couple of guys who were working in Pitlochry, Scotland, at a hotel. They were out hiking in the Cairngorms National Park, and they looked up and they saw. They described what they described as a diamond-shaped UFO, massive, huge diamond-shaped flying object, completely silent. Uh, when they they went and hid behind a bush, but they eventually plucked up the courage to get a camera out and take some photographs of this object. Now. These photographs have been one of the biggest mysteries in ufology because they were immediately taken by the Ministry of Defence. This was in the pre-Nick Pope days. Someone else was running the UFO desk back then. I think Nick took over in 92, I believe. Um, and um, there was basically, there was a crude photocopy that was made. But apart from that, we had no idea what this thing looked like. And then suddenly, lo and behold... Oh, we just found a print. This guy called Craig Lindsay has a print of it. He's, he's had it all these years. He's been keeping it for like more than 30 yeah. years in his house. This is now this guy was the former, he used to be the RAF press officer. He then joined the he left the RAF, joined the civil service, and became a Ministry of Defense official. And um, he interviewed the witnesses. He, he arranged for the D notice so the newspapers couldn't report on it. And um, he confiscated all the prints and, and the original film, but he kept one print for himself, a big one. He put it inside a book so it was well-preserved, so it didn't curl up or anything. And um, and of all the people, Dr. David Clark found out about it and went to visit Lindsay. Now, Craig Lindsay's old. He's like 82 now. He doesn't give a, he doesn't give a damn about anything because um, he doesn't. He obviously feels his family are safe and things like that. And he's, he's a photo of him holding up this. And this, um, this original photo has been just, and it really is an incredible photo. <clears throat> it is as good as it's been hyped up to be. You see distinctly a, a diamond. It doesn't look like a diamond-shaped object hanging in the sky. And uh, there's a plane nearby. It's, this is actually a, a Harrier strike aircraft. What, what, sorry, I'm going to try and find a copy of this. What would I say? Calvine. Just put in Calvine UFO, C-A-L-V-I-N-E, and UFO, and you'll, you'll see it. UFO. All right. Okay. Oh, right. Jesus. Yeah. Well, you look at that. That is, one of the, that is one of the biggest mysteries in ufology, and it suddenly reappeared. I'll put just, it up there, Jay. I'm going to pop it up, yeah. I'll just get some, some more dragon juice. You're all right, bro. This is a You're remarkable right. picture. Though. This is an absolutely remarkable picture. Have you not seen this before? Yeah, there it is. Now, ch check it's the right one. No, not that one. Not uh, it's not. That's a facsimile. That's a fake one. That's, uh, you go, it's the one, one, two, three, four, five. It's the fifth one along, or fifth or sixth one along at the end. That's it, one of those two. That's it. That's the actual photo. It looks like one of those old German um, devices that were being built at the, around the end of World War II. That I was to sort of hazard a guess what it might be. Um, do you, have you, are you familiar with those um, flying machines that the, oh, the Germans were at the end of World in? War II? Germany was constructing some really remarkable um, technology. Mm. Yeah, 
um, involving they were they were really splashing out and they were going they were going hellbent for leather to develop anti gravity and things like that. According to now this is that's the object yeah now according to the witnesses that made no sound at all. It was hovering in the air. So what is it? I mean, it doesn't look like an aeroplane. It doesn't appear to have wings. It doesn't have rotors. So it's not a helicopter. It doesn't have an envelope. It's not a balloon. Um, and this this plane, you can see it's out of focus because it's obviously much for, but quite distant. But there was a plane. This is a Harrier V-Stars. That's, that's a strike aircraft that's really designed for um, missions against ground targets. It's not really an interceptor. Yet they were using this... Uh, Obviously, maybe that's all they had available to go, to go and scramble it. Or some people have claimed it was escorting this object. In other words, this is some kind of this is some kind of aircraft, some kind of new aircraft that's been designed by secret laboratories at Area Fifty One. Um, in which case, I don't know what it was doing flying at low altitude in Scotland, but there you go. Um, <laughs> Doctor David Clark, I, I, I mean, he's I've. I've been quite a, like a harsh critic of his because um, he's very much a skeptic. He's kind of like, uh, imagine Neil Sanders talking about UFOs. I mean, he's kind of like that. But um, to give him his credit, you know, he's been really, um, he's been really good on this. I mean, he's really been honest. You know, he says, I can't explain this. This is a, re this is, this is a, put it's a very, very close image of a very well exposed, perfect exposure, very close. Details of the structure are visible. You can see it has some kind of, um, appendage on its right hand side there's some there's some there's a white feature it's the shape is clear the lighting is clear stuff like that he says and um the question is why now why has it been released now hmm. so i don't believe i don't believe this stuff I will, well only it's released now because craig lindsay suddenly appeared and said oh i've got one now if they didn't want to release it now they could they didn't have to release it now so why why are they suddenly releasing it now? I mean, um, it's weird, isn't it? I mean, well, they always got to keep feeding you just enough, just to to just to keep you interested, but but never actually getting the uh, the actual story of it. I, I, this is my idea of it anyway. That like you know they'll never give you the full story, but they, they they've always got to uh, keep feeding you a small bit just to keep the the myth alive in a sense, you know, um, no. you know. Yeah, I mean, well, the thing is, Jimmy. I mean, they they didn't do that for seventy years. I'm, 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 I mean, wonder. You see, it just seems the timing is is very, very strange. It's like there's some kind of um, it's almost something like something theatric. I mean, do you believe that? The, do you believe that the UFO myth actually serves some kind of purpose? It's actually not something they're just trying to cover up. That it is some kind of um, neo mythology they're trying to impose on us. Do you believe that? I don't think so, because the UFO myth is not kind of, it, it's it's not hidden. It's 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 in all the old tablets. It's 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 kind of written on it, it, Egyptian hieroglyphs. It's it's everywhere. It's in the, it's in the old tablets that were taken out of Sumeria. It's it, it's in the Indian culture in the, uh, in the old in, Indian text. That like these devices did exist in our prior past, you know, and. Um, I don't believe in aliens, right? I don't believe in that crap. But I think a lot of this technology is ours. It's been here. It always has been here. And it's it's never gone away because it's it's kept back by yeah. a select uh, portion of society who are actually pulling the strings of everything. But I don't believe in aliens. So I, I, well, don't I, like, yeah. no, I, I think that I, I don't know where they are or where they're from. Um, or who they're from, or whatever. But I do believe that they're, they're, they're well, they um, there's some sort of um, agreement with governments around the world. They, we've got something they need. They give us their technology, and we trade that way. And I think there's often been times where um, things have got to uh, to a place where you know perhaps we uh, we're falling out over things. And uh, I think I think it's you know it's a, a you could have any, couldn't you? People from another dimension, you know, time travelers from another dimension coming back to see what happened before, um, you know, all them weird weirdos worldwide, you know, the, the weirdos before the uh, drones, 
with no uh, genitalia because they never have any genitalia or anything like that. Perhaps they are. <coughs> and, well, some uh, do. Uh, no, some of them do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, do they really? I've never heard of that. I'm yes, not. believe it or not, yeah, some of them do. But um, no, but it's the. It's pretty clear this is a perennial. This is a perennial part of the human experience. Um, I don't believe that Betty and Barney Hill were the first alien abductees. I don't believe that Kenneth Arnold saw, saw the first ever flying saucers. This was just an instant in which these these phenomena first entered the, the mainstream culture. It was an awareness within mainstream culture. What's actually happened, um, They go. I think they've been with us a long time. They've probably been on this earth, whatever, wherever they come from, whatever they are, they've been around probably before we were. Some people claim they had a hand in creating our species. Indeed, there's lots of ancient mythology about that, from from the Bible to the Sumerian tablets, as, as Jimmy mentioned. Um, there seems we're in a situation now where it appears that the the state there seems to be some kind of infernal triangle in place between ourselves, the state, and the extraterrestrials themselves. We have a kind of um, there's this weird relationship we've developed in the modern age in which they are the, the state is specifically trying to deny the existence of the extraterrestrials to the the population the general population of which as, we, as we've already explained they have a very low opinion of us they regard us as not, not nothing more than another species of farm animal well, fucking, i've um, got a very low opinion of us i think <laughs> that the species were very fucking Few and far between, more than fucking cattle. I mean, you know, you sometimes get a dog that wins a talent contest. It was a dog to be Charlotte and Jonathan, and I, I was so disappointed because I thought those two were just marvelous together. But the dog won. <laughs> Amazing. There you go. You see, that's what I mean. It's. I think most people. Uh, 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 I think that the, their opinions are valid. At least, no, 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 we're quite as bad as that, but what? Yeah, well, when it comes to my book, uh, Ros Roswell Rising, a novel of disclosure, uh, available at all good bookshops now, priced £10, and it's two sequels. I think if I was writing that book now, I would have written it slightly differently because I believe that, I mean, I wrote this in sort of 2015, published 2016, but um, I believe that uh, yeah, it's true. I mean, most people are pretty, are pretty indifferent to this subject, I believe, actually. But the government still suppress it. They suppress it probably there's several reasons, probably to do with the the fact that they have um, probably worked out a lot of a lot of the uh, the propulsion and power plant systems for them, and they don't want us using it. They don't want us using this infinite supply of free energy. They'd rather have us on the fossil fuels. So they can keep charging us more and more for them. Um, so we they, so the bills go up and we go, oh my God, save us and things like that. And the, the the gas and oil companies make lots of money, but um, it's pretty clear that whatever the reason is, they have been very very keen that we. I mean, I can quote you from it. I mean, from the uh, the Rotley Hill and the cut the twining memo. This was um, General Nathan Twining and Roscoe Hillencutter, who was the first head of the CIA. Oh, I'll par I'm paraphrasing now, but they said, although we know these things are real and that the flying saucers are a real thing. It's very important that the general public does not understand that. Therefore, we're going to treat them with official ridicule and denial. They use that. That is a quote, official ridicule and denial. And that policy remained in place for 70 years and five months. It ended on December the 17th, 2017, when the New York Times published Leslie Kane and Ralph Blumenthal's article about UFOs. Okay, so that that would that would have a time limit. You're fine. Yeah. It, 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 My it, question it, is why why did that why did that change? And then all these other things have happened since, including the Calvin UFO reappearing, just popping back out of the ether. And yeah. Just, are you okay, Sorry. mate? Right. I just I'm me wondering. Up. I'm wondering. Are they about ready to unleash uh, some of these new technologies? Because what we've been seeing over the last couple of years, like with this. Um, bullshit like climate change argument and that we've got to uh, stick to these um, sustainable energies like and, and, and they're right, what they're promoting as sustainable energies such as solar and and wind are, are really like um, they're, they're like very very dodgy versions of high technology so I'm just wondering are, are they getting ready to release some of this new technology to us, like you know, uh, at just the right moment in time, when 
when we're at the moment of despair and everybody's losing hope. Oh, by the way, we we just found this under our <laughs> under our sofa here. It, um, it's actually free energy. So uh, I think this is where this is going at the moment. So maybe maybe we're heading to the stage where they're about to release some of this higher technology. Well, if that's the case, it's probably. I mean, I would say, well, if that's that goes against everything that I I've believe from my own analysis of the Illuminati and how they operate, which if it's wrong, it's wrong. I mean, I'm curious to see how they think they're going to build a new world or a new world order with free energy, an infinite amount of energy, which will eliminate poverty and which, and all the things that we're supposed to be scared of, like eliminate fear for the environment, eliminate inequality and all things like that. I mean, um, it's, it could be if that happens, Jimmy. It may mean that you know the white hats have finally taken over in the Illuminati are finished. I think maybe maybe that's one of these finish line moments, which means oh, that's I, it. That's the end of the new world order, guys. Mission accomplished. We can say. Um, I don't even true. actually believe in white hats myself. I think there's just criminal gangs, <coughs> and uh, I think the criminal gangs are fighting for ultimate. Because I noticed in some of your videos, you talk a bit about the NWO, like and. Mm. And I was just uh, having thoughts about where, where, what I could ask you about it, like, oh, where you stand with this NWO, because I don't see any white hats or black hats, or I just see criminal gangs vying for control. And I think I want our criminal gang here from the West to be in control in the end, not the ones from the East. Uh, I think I think our our criminal gangs are much more predictable. You so, put it. Do you see it's going to <laughs> <laughs> fight man and say, I don't want any of your criminal gangs, I don't want any of your anythings. This is our clan, this, man. Right? This is our clan. But then, <laughs> do, you, do you believe so? You see it's kind of Game of Thrones like situation, they're just basically all fighting each other. Oh, yeah. And, uh, right. Oh, yeah. Now, I, I would say that that's unlikely because. In such a in such a scenario of internecine fighting, it would be very much like Game of Thrones. I mean, game you see, Game of Thrones was kind of written as a kind of answer to Tolkien because um, J.R. Tolkien was his own story, The Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit. It's very moralistic. It's very idealistic. It goes in a, in a it's a linear story that goes in a particular direction from your good guys versus bad guys, bad guys taking you know, and then eventually the good guys win. So it has that kind of linear progression. Uh, Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin said, well, that goes against my own, you know, he says human nature is not like that. You know, generally speaking, that society is not like that. And that everyone is just simply out for themselves. It is literally, I say, a Game of Thrones, a power struggle between different warring clans and and houses, mm. um, which is what, you know, in this sort of like a medieval style, it's an imaginary world, but it's a very medieval type scenario. Um in that situation, though, you you would have a situation much more like Game of Thrones. There's no particular direction in which the world is going. However, when I look at the world around me, I, I do see it heading in a particular direction. There is a there is a there seems to be a global agenda in place, which is heading towards greater internationalism and authoritarianism, and it's been going on for for, for centuries, if not longer. And uh, the 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 families, as you say, the criminal gangs are um sure they they want their own they want to be top of their own greasy pole but um generally speaking <laughs> this this mission of theirs is sacred and they all adhere to it and they sat yeah. they they're actually willing to sacrifice i mean that, they do sometimes you look at look at sometimes they'll even sacrifice their own i mean kings and queens have been beheaded in france in russia and they they Not sacrifice yet. their own bloodlines they kill them they they, mm -hmm. they die um when they when they want for the sake of this agenda which means um there appear, there appears to be, like say, the black hats, the bad guys. Now, if 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 they if white hats don't exist, what are they scared of? Because they're scared of something right now. They are definitely something has spooked them. Oh yeah, since they are. 2016, they've gone nuts. They've gone. There's a whole C word lockdown. You know, for fiasco was a retaliate retaliatory strike against everything that happened in 2016, the breakdown of their control for just a few months. They lost control, complete control. Trump was going to end NATO. Um, Trump was pulling America out of NATO, and then all of a sudden something happened, and that didn't, uh, and it didn't go through. Something changed there at that particular mm. moment in time. I'm not, I'm not sure what it was, but they had, for some reason they had to take Trump out. I don't like yeah, Trump. It, I'm not a big a, fan, but it was like um, it, it seems to tie I in. Think, to... I don't think so. I think he will put the. Uh, I think he will all part of that plan. 
And I think that's where it all fell down. <coughs> Is that we're all part of that plan that everyone was going to hate all that and they were going to be, you know, everybody were going to turn all woke and everything. It didn't happen. Right? And Trump did add that effect. So they had to get rid of him. Yes, they had to get rid of him and the, then in comes Dopey Joe. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it's gone. So it's got to go now that it's like, it's almost like the, the New World Order, this is is like a, a stumbling drunk, right? <laughs> and then they thought, oh, it'll be good to go this way, this on, on my way. Um, and that was the Trump way that they went, okay? So this is the Trump way. And, and as they go that way, and they're on a slight hill, they trip up and they fall over. And I think that's where they are now. They're falling and rolling down that hill. I think that's what's happened. They've ramped everything up so uh, so. Another criminal gang has entered into the bidding for controller of the world. I think it's inevitable that a world order, it's inevitable that we are going to unite at some, on some sort of like greater harmonic scale. I think it's inevitable. And uh, I'm just wondering which criminal gang is going to come out on top of it, you know. And uh, I hope it's our guys. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, speaking of which, um, oh, this, this were quite funny. Uh, but one at night, we decided we weren't going to work because they were a piano bar. We only just went for a couple of drinks. This were on the holiday. So we went to this sports bar. Now, we'd noticed a couple of days before, uh, for, for a couple of days, there were a bloke who got a, a dog collar on. You were a vicar. And we thought, that was a bit weird. Like, you know, we said, what's the vicar doing here? And um, so, uh, anyway, uh, we, we saw him a couple of times on his own. Anyway, this one night, we went into the sports bar instead. So we're going to the sports bar, and there's uh, only us and another couple. And then there's all these people come in. And I got a bar, and I've had a quite, uh, I've had a quite a few of Jack Daniels, and I were, uh, you know, I were well, well chatty with everybody because everyone always wants to talk to me and ask me how my leg fell off, and I always, you know, I always make some addiction <laughs> every time. It's always a skydiving explosion or you know, uh, a, a, a shark bit me, or I'm just really, really, really into hide and seek. And I started with my leg first, and I'm open to like the ultimate hide and seek. And, and, he, and you know, any sort of <coughs> that's rubbish. Anyway, so I guess talking to this bloke in a suit, he's got his suit on in this tie, and he was from uh, Montana. And I said, uh, I said, Montana, so you're quite a way away from your, your gaff, like. And he says, oh, and he's chatting. Yeah, he's a black guy. And uh, he's, uh, we're having a chat and everything. And I said, uh, and what are you doing here? And he says, I'm here for, uh, for, for a, a, a spiritual conference. We're doing a tour. So I thought, I, I bumped into a missionary who's, his missionary, his, his mission in life is that, He's gonna uh, he's gonna go and spread the word of God, and while he's doing it, he's gonna stop in five star resorts, you know. <laughs> <coughs> so he's a missionary. So I was, I was sat talking for it was quite a, you know quite a, a couple of minutes just chatting, and I said to him, I said, "Tell me one thing." Uh, I said, uh, "Yeah, you, you're really really serious about your religion," and uh, he said, "Yeah, damn damn, that was serious. Yeah, you gotta believe in all the Lord and all this." So I said, "I said, well, I'll tell you what." I said, would you know if you met Jesus? And he said, yes, I think I would know if you met Jesus. I said, well, you didn't. And I walked off. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, that's, that's messing with I've got this. I've got this image in my head of, uh, of, I know he's a black guy, but I've got this image in my head of Bernard Breslau in uh, Carry On Abroad, <laughs> the monk. <laughs> and a, a poor guy. <laughs> um, that's just a uh, yeah, all sorts, don't you, in Lanzarote? No, oh, no, yeah, but you, you know, it's just like uh, everybody's got their own, their own opinion, their own, their own world, and you know, he's going around spreading the word of God and stopping in resorts and living it up. And uh, I mean, they were there at least three or four days, and then he was telling me they were going on to somewhere else and somewhere else, and then he said, in about six weeks, I'm going to have to go back to Montana. And, uh, and some other stuff, and so you know, he's got this jet set lifestyle, and he's uh, spreading the word of God. So, um, it's you know, it's uh, it's not a bad gig, really. Yeah, come not on, a, he's, he's he, at least he can like go into a sports bar and let his hair down. I mean, um, they they do sometimes. I I mean, I I knew a I met I knew a Sacred Heart friar once, and um, a guy from Ireland actually, and he was like, uh, he used to drink, he used to smoke, he used to swear. He was like, he was a real man about town. I tell you. <laughs> 
Uh, 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 t- speaking of men about town, Robert's show is on tomorrow night. It is eight o'clock. The uh, Health Freedom UK, go to there. If you're not already a subscriber, he's in the chat. Uh, Jimmy would normally do the subscribe thing, but he's just, I think he's gone to uh, check on his fire or something like that. Uh, see, if, see if it's going out. But uh, yeah, uh, Health Freedom UK, that's tomorrow night, talking about your health. So we got about, um, whew, I've got about five minutes left because I like to finish exactly on two hours then. Odyssey mm. automatically uploads it, you see. That's oh, cool. Uh, that's uh, if it's under two hours. But last week I did it and it, we, we did it in two, it, when I finished it, it was two hours and one second. Oh, no, so you had to download it and put it on Odyssey yeah, and stuff like that. I just thought, well, uh, nobody, watched, you know, nobody wants to watch that. Anyway. It was on, it's still on YouTube. But uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, what, what are your plans? Tell us about your books. Uh, they're novels, aren't they? Uh, the yeah. Novel Rising, is it? This is basically like a, a story. I Well, basically, I I had a thought to myself. I thought, well, what if um, what if we got the, all the stuff we talk about on our shows, what you talk about and I talk about on my publications, what if we got the truth instead of the lies? What would happen? Now, I'm a writer of fiction. You know, I write stories. I imagine stories. And so what popped into my head was an imaginary scenario. And um, in this imaginary scenario, I thought, well, it sort of like grew and grew and grew. And I thought, I could I could turn this into a story. And I could write a book about it. And I did. I eventually wrote this book, Roswell Rising, A Novel of Disclosure. And it's it's focused on the – it starts with, like, the UFO issue, but it goes off into other areas as well. And it went down, it went down so well, I ended up writing a, a sequel called Roswell Revealed. I don't have a copy of that with me now. Um, but um, Roswell Revealed – a world after disclosure, and eventually there was a third one called Roswell Redeemed Humanity After Disclosure. And so together I call them the Roswell Trilogy. And uh, you get them at all good bookshops, price £10. And uh, if you if you go into a bookshop and it's not on the shelf, it's not a good bookshop. Never shop there again. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I think if you enjoy this program, you'll probably enjoy those books. Um, you enjoy the story I've written there. So um, I'm writing a... Um, I'm trying to write a serial now. It's online. I've, I've already published chapters one to six. It's on my fictional blog, which is called Ben's Bookcase, at panmo-bb.blogspot.co.uk. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, writing, I'm still doing my own shows like yourself. I've got my own channel and things like that. So, um, and I've got my radio show and all, oh, all these other things I'm doing. I'm like a multimedia guy, you know. Just everywhere. everywhere yeah, it feels everywhere. like it. You see, you, people disappear, but they, you know, there's people that uh, that we've had on the show that have come and gone, and you don't even hear anything of them anymore. Um, but but not yourself; you're always around. It's uh, there's a, a lot a lot of your stuff, all all there, ready to listen to. So that's where you should go find Ben's stuff. Uh, his YouTube channel. It's there, Ben the JR ben, Porter. I've got it. It's, it's, it's my ben name. Ben the JR on Porter. Yeah, I'm, Porter. I'm going yeah. to get that. Up. I'm going to get that up now for you. Um, Thanks, uh, for mate. People Thanks. in the chat and. Uh, my main blog is called cool. the Panwo Hospital Porters Against the New World Order. That's my that's my website, my various blogs and things. I've got so many of them now. But if you put in H P A N W O, you will find you'll find um you'll you'll find all my stuff there. So uh, there's a lot, so much there though. But um... yeah, so there you go. I think we're finished there because we're we're just about done, aren't we? And then if we're really under, we're really under. Like by two minutes or a minute and a half. So uh, big thanks yes. to uh, Ben for coming on tonight. Um, it is, it's yes. always it's been fantastic. It's yeah. uh, been interesting. We've covered many, many subjects and uh, we'll probably do it about this time next year. All I'm being sure. well. Talking Surely, about yes. how we're all better and, you know, how the world has changed. And, <laughs> we hope you know, so. And where disclosure, <laughs> and where disclosure stands. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Well, you never know. It could it could have happened by then. Well, I always say that, don't I? But, Jimmy and Jason, it's been, it's been great talking to you guys. I've had a wonderful time. It's been a really interesting show. Two hours just flies by. I thought, I'm going to have to, go out, so I'm going to, have to take yeah. a break and get a cup of tea, but I didn't need to. So, uh, and thanks, everyone, <laughs> for watching and um, things like that. So, thank you very much, all of you. It's been it's been really Brilliant. great. Okay, keep in touch okay. anyway, everybody. Thanks to everyone guys. who's not been in the chat, who's just been listening, and to you, Jimmy, as well, my mate. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, there's the Health Freedom UK. Dr. Robert, not to, not a doctor, is going to be doing the health show, or if you fancy slumming it, um, the starfish troopers or something like that. Star- yeah. The, the uh, chocolate starfish troopers, they're on as well. So if you fancy... Uh, 
slum in it. So uh, there you go. And don't forget, and don't forget Steve Turd Goose on Thursday. And Steve Turd Goose on Thursday. And uh, we'll be back on Friday. Take it easy, everybody.